the literal meaning of mudra what is exactly what it means it means expression of internal feelings by way of different postures of fingers palms hand feet and body the whole topic is about embracing the power of mudras for well being so it is very important to understand that how a simple hand gesture can lead to an overall well being of the body mind and soul it's exactly like how when you do an electrification process you take a wire and you ground it to the earth call it earthing that basically supports the entire electricity in your entire house mansion building etc etc so that's the analogy everybody i'm sure can connect with that so what your mudras do the position of your mudras it's like a silent language you have to understand it it's a silent language of self expression and that is why that you know a posing in a photography when you're modeling you know a certain pose will pick up very well because it seems to communicate a lot I and mean, when you look at fashion channels and say for example a high end fashion brand and it will say that you know we want your hands in a certain way we want you to pose it a certain way we want you to look at a certain way because that entire silhouette the whole body a particular hand suppose it's a ad for a bangle then that 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 particular pose for a hand is also a mudra because that communicates very very strongly on what the philosophy of the product is or of the brand is similarly when you take a mudra in sadhana right you stand you pose you sit you sleep you pose you take a deep breath and you align and when you align that is the position where the energy will get conducted the energy from all over your body will rush to that particular point whether it is your index finger all the five fingers your palms your wrist whatever it is and it will start bringing you results so it is that profound and it has been very very underrated people haven't talked about mudra a lot because obviously we are still coming into grips with so many aspects of indic knowledge that suddenly seems to have filled our lives after after the pandemic so dheere 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 karke i know that we will also there will be a time when we'll be talking about very very delicate nuances of the indic knowledge system and i'm glad that we're able to talk about the mudra today what are mudras it's right in front of you what are mudras so like i just told you it's a seal it's like a gesture that is used in yoga to contain the flow of energy it's a very simple explanation that when you are flowing now how will you understand this have you practiced this yoga asana or a yoga abhyas for say 30 40 minutes continuously so have you practiced say sun salutation or moon salutation or have you practiced a vinyasa flow when you are in the flow of that that yogic flow like a river and when you then stop at a particular point with a particular hand gesture the entire energy of that flow will culminate in your body inducing positivity inducing a rush of oxygenated blood and a lot of prana so that's what a mudra can do but for you to actually understand this i suggest you practice you practice a certain so you know you can go for a walk maybe 1 hour 45 minutes brisk walk then sit on a bench keep your back absolutely straight close your eyes open your shoulders and just bring both your hands together like that and then close your eyes and what you feel at that point when you breathe in and when you breathe out is the magic of that mudra which is a gesture which is like a seal that kind of stamps it saying okay 
today's workout done you have got enough amount of electromagnetic energy there's a lot of positive radiation around you you're good to go that's what mudras can do now there are three types of mudras we have hasta mudra which is primarily your hands kahaya mudra now there will be this whole question if what if you didn't have hands there are a lot of people who don't have hands and for them there is kahaya mudra they can use any part of their body and then you have chitta mudra which is all about using your mind your conscious but for all our information it's hasta mudras that are most commonly used so we talk about that. like if any of you travel to the delhi airport you will see this whole figurines of different different types of mudra they've got this giant sized mudras put up on the walls like murals and they're fascinating to look at they've also been like you know for example when we talk about it uh it started with the origin of tantra now when we talk about mudras they're not very just upar tak there's a lot of depth in it so there are tantra sadhakas which is the vamangi way of so there are two ways to worship to do bhakti and to do sadhana one is the dakshinachara which we all understand as doing the regular you know karma kand and doing our prayer and going to the temple and then there is the vama vamachara which is the tantra sadhana and mudras basically originated by the tantra sadhakas and so uh, they used to involve their entire body they used to position their entire body uh, like a closed electrical circuit that was capable of passing um, energy so mudra science is a very ancient art it connects um, certain energy flows in the mind body system you know these are vital points you can write it down if you are taking notes then you can just write down these two three lines which will really help you understand mudras a lot so in ancient art an ancient science that connects certain energy flows in the mind body system and the literal meaning of mudra what is exactly what it means it means expression of internal feelings by way of different postures of fingers palms hand feet and body okay now so for example if i am angry and i don't want to talk to you or say i don't want to talk to you or you say get lost or you say keep quiet these are all mudras these are all mudras for expression but like in in the real world where you are walking for work and you are walking for the sense of taking care of your body the intention becomes different similarly the hand gestures that you use to express a certain thing will become different based on the intention of it so that's a very easy way to understand that we are actually even right now when i'm talking i'm using my hands i'm using a lot of my hasta mudra to express or to you know uh, it somehow the hand kind of brings out the words that i want to speak when you look at musicians you will always see their hands move or they'll see one hand near the ear all of these are mudras all of these are expressions silent expressions of the body so while your mouth speaks your body speaks through your hands or it speaks through your eyes right so that's exactly what a mudra is now along with their wide use in tantric and shamanic traditions mudras also hold a mighty spot in our classical dance forms you all know that in bharatanatyam in kuchipudi in kathakali in mohiniyattam you since uh, you've seen these dance performances everything is about a per- perfect hand gesture a perfect mudra a perfect flow using the hands right ancient texts also reiterate that the physical body is made out of five elements so the human body is made with these five elements they connect the certain feelings and the energies that we have so for example uh, we know that the thumb the index finger the middle finger the ring finger and the little fingers so do you know that from these hands they're all connected to a certain element and the pranic life force that runs through your entire body you know is basically conductor of the hands are the conductor of that element correct so that is the illustration that is there in front of your screen where you see the fire which is your agni which is your which is the thumb or the angushta you have air vayu then which is your, which is your tarjini which is your heaven and or ether all of this ether is your madhyama 
Then you have earth, right? Which is your anamika, that is your ring finger. And then you have water, which is your kanishtika, or that is your little finger, right? So ye sari jo, all of this information is what we are just talking very casually, comes from thousands of years of research where rishis would sit, close their eyes and connect with the universe. And from the universe, they would get that symbol, that signal. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to make you feel energy, right? So what you have to do is just follow my voice. Make sure that, you know, you don't open your eyes until I tell you. So you keep your back straight and you close your eyes. Now, until you hear from me, don't open your eyes again. All right. Now, take a long, deep breath. So first of all, if there's too much disturbance around you, and there might be a lot of noise around you, I suggest either you wear a noise-canceling device or you shut your door and make sure that there is no noise. That'll help a lot. Okay. All you do is take a long, deep breath. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Remove. Just Take in, take in that long, deep breath. Yes, stay there. Stay there. And now retain that breath. Bahar saans ko nikalna nahi hai. Retain that breath. And now exhale in the count of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once more. Inhale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hold the breath. Retain it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more time. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath. And now exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now hold the breath outside the body. Don't breathe. Hold the breath outside the body. And now again inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Hold the breath. Now exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold the breath outside the body. Stay there. Stay there. Take a long deep breath. Just stay there. And now, rub both your hands together. Cover your face. Open your eyes in your hands. And bring your hands into a namaskar. Okay, now what you want to do is, Think about your Ishtadev or Devi or your parents or your Guru, whoever. Okay? And now separate your hands. You can open your eyes and you're going to look at me and you're going to do this. Okay? Just separate your hands just a bit. Very slowly. See, don't do this like that. Okay? Now look between the space between your hands. Look between the space. Okay? Imagine there is a ball here and look at it. And now rotate your hands gently like a cycle. Aap cycle chalate ho na? Similarly, just three to four rounds clockwise, three to four rounds anti-clockwise. You'll feel some sensation between your hands. Okay? Very slowly. Now, make a cup like as though there's a ball here. And now, just gently push your hands. Gently push it. Up up, the hands will go out. And then bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. And then go back. Allow it to happen on its own. I'm sure most of you have felt this energy. Okay? And then palms. And then put it all over your body. Allow this energy to go all over your body. Especially in your Vishuddhi Chakra. This is the biggest cause of all your distress is the Vishuddhi Chakra. Okay. Now that you understood Many might have done this before. Many might not have done this before. This is how your hands are conductors of energy. 
okay so now that makes it very easy for us to go to the next few slides and understand what it is that helps us to uh, get good thinking in the end in life the one rule is if your thoughts are good everything is good right the entire world is struggling with mental disruption and that is why there is a physical disruption and we have to understand it those who understand it will go and live a happy life those who don't understand it will create chaos but the catch is that those who don't understand it will also affect your life right so we have to make sure that everybody we know slowly 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 switch on that positivity how do you do that by platforms like this you know you have a platform like this that will communicate the goodness it will communicate why it is important to remain connected why it is important for us to understand these things you know and that is how good word will also spread exactly how bad word spreads good word can also spread right this is a very very important slide now we talked about prana right we know that you know there is the breath now if i am uh, i am radhika and i die then you don't say radhika is here you see her body is here correct now similarly why did radhika was alive 20 minutes ago become a body later simply because the only defining factor that she is radhika is because she has prana right if you don't have prana you become a shava right you just become another object and that is why prana is everything now i have said this many times if i tell you ki aap don't eat food right you can survive for three or four days i don't think you'll have a problem no water no problem aaram se char panch din you will stay without there are cases where people have lived without water in fact recently there was an article where the in amazon forest where this whole family you know of four children the mother and two co pilots so the mother and the co two pilots died in the helicopter crash the children survived the crash and they were in the deep amazon forest and they lived for 40 days they had they ate the regular you know fruits there the grandmother must have given them some basic info for 40 days and the the youngest was a 11 month old kid so i'm just trying to tell you is that food and water you can easily survive for 10 days 15 days 20 days there are many of us absolutely in fasting during festivals and things like that the basic thing is that there is no food no water no problem but what if i told you that you cannot breathe what if somebody put a plastic bag on your head you can't survive for more than 2 minutes 3 minutes now so now think as human beings the one thing which is not going to be possible for you to have this life you are not ready to work on that thing at all we want great bodies we are talking about nutrition but you are not talking about the breath that is a fundamental of all of this right so when we talk about mudras and we talk about yoga we talk about pranayama and adhyan all of the indic texts they will ask you to align your mind first because once your mind is aligned the entire perception of everything is changed suppose you are somebody who is very calm as a person any news whether it is good or whether it is bad you will treat it unanimously right sukheshu anudigna manaha dukheshu vrigadasparaha bhita raga bhaya krodaha sthiti dihi muniruchyate krishna says that that in the times of great happiness and at times of great distress the one who remains equanimous equanimity is the word he is sthiti he the one who is equanimous is a muni is a rishi right and that is the reason when we talk about mudras it is very important to understand prana right now whatever you felt is pranic energy and that means that you are not alone you might think in a room sitting or here that you're saying all alone but there is a lot of electromagnetic energy around you 
there are different thoughts different sounds every single sound vibrates in the universe and you just need to attune yourself to a frequency so you can understand it so when you do mudra vigyan you attune yourself to that frequency that's how it works okay now that's our basis we've understood the the under underlying principle of mudra vigyan so we can go to the five types of prana now there are different different zones in your body in which energy reverberates right so like for example if you need to go to say the railway station there are different different routes that will take you to that railway station there might be a fast route there might be a slow route now having said that there might be different different vehicles you can use to go to the station somebody who has a very high end fast car might go very fast somebody who is going by a local bus will go very slow do you understand so the pranic energy in your body does exactly that which prana are your body using depends on how good your thought is and how calm your mind is so it is so complicated but at the same time it's very simple and how is it simple that instead of getting into the details of all of this just practice pranayam just practice mudra it will automatically by default take you to a upgrade you to a different level correct so apana is for everything that you require to excrete think of all the things in your body that you need to throw out right from your uh, excretion you're going to your toilet your urine sexual release sweat tears fart think of all of those things that need to get out of your body the apana vayu is responsible for that right so there are many mudras that will tell you that if you do this mudra your digestion will be very good if you do this mudra your menstruation cycle will be very good that is because it works with the apana vayu system okay then you have the samana anything that you need to assimilate so anything that you need to digest to build your metabolism the last vishwa talks i talked a lot in length about metabolism and immunity and what we need to go and what happens and all of that so if your samana vayu is very good it will help your body to digest whatever that you take intake in your body and to keep your digestive system bang on a1 right then you have prana prana is basically that comes from your nose to your chest that means all the oxygen that you take in it you know uses that to supply in a blood to the heart so that is a prana that is your main vayu which that's why we say pranic vayu in everything because everything from outside turns into oxygen when it comes inside and that is the function of the pranic system then we have the vyana you've taken in the prana but it has to circulate everywhere no it has to go to the brain you know that certain things have to go to the chest to the arteries to the veins to the hands everything knees so vyana vayu does that vyana vayu make sure okay this is 100% i've received this goes here this goes here so it distributes and it circulates right and the last is udana vayu what we are doing right now you're listening to me i'm talking to you you are following my instructions at the same time you're thinking you might be thinking about three or four other things you know or you might be completely absorbed in it all of this is udana vayu so this is very important that the mudra system works on the five elements the pancha mahabhutas and it works on the five types of prana